Yo, what is up? Welcome to Ninja Geek Games. Previously, Dranda Games released Solar Storm, a cooperative small box game where you're frantically running about a damaged vessel trying to repair various rooms before meeting a fiery doom by hurtling into the sun. Their latest Kickstarter release, Solar Sphere, is a one to four player competitive game where the human race has exhausted the planet of resources and you've been tasked with building a sphere to harness the power of the entire solar system. As you can see, Dranda Games are keen on themes with inevitable doom in catastrophic circumstances. It's worrying. They should talk to someone. Solar Sphere is a worker placement using dice that represents ships where you need to gain resources, hire crew, battle against alien enemies and construct parts of the sphere in order to gain morale and reputation and ultimately victory points. What you see here is set up for two players. This is the Solar Sphere surrounded by eight locations represented by cards and here we have a market area for crew to hire as well as an area at the top of the screen to draw and place enemy ships that we'll need to try and defeat. These are the player areas where you each have a board to track reputation and morale, areas to store your dock ships as well as separate areas to store resources that you'll claim during the game and drones that can act as markers at various locations. These drones are in one of three states where they could be in reserve off to the side, inactive in the red area of your player board or active if in the blue area. The components are really nice from the artwork on the cards, especially the crew which are awesome, the huge solar sphere and the player board with indented areas to store your items. During the game you'll be placing dice of various values at the locations surrounding the solar sphere. Your dice are rolled at the start of each round and depending on which location you want to visit there are requirements for dice values. So if I want to go here I need an even number, but if I want to go here I need a specific value. You can then carry out the action located on the card which could be to gain resources to your player board, hire crew from the market area by spending your resources or claiming tiles on the solar sphere. There is also a battle phase where players can attempt to defeat enemy ships to claim the rewards but if failed or neglected get removed and replaced and you could end up losing morale and endgame victory points. During the game you have limited actions to take each turn with only 3 dice and 8 available locations. Also each location has specific requirements for the value of dice play so this too can limit your options meaning any plans you made on a previous turn could be scuppered by a bad roll. But at each location you have 2 options available. You can take the action on the card or prepare that location so on future turns you get a boosted version of the action and this is where drones come in that can be used in a number of ways. At setup, each player starts with satellite drones either in the active or inactive state on their player board. Drones in the active area can be deployed to mark locations, sphere tiles you've claimed or enemy ships that you're attacking. Only drones in the active area of your board can be used this way and if you run out you need to use a particular location card action to either move inactive drones across or fabricate them by taking them from your supply area. Instead of taking an action at a location, these drones can be deployed to the card that your die is at. Nothing happens in that turn, but later in the game, if you take any action at a location where you have drones, you get a boosted version of the action. These can provide you with extra resources or the ability to fabricate more drones for later use. If you place a die on a solar sphere location, you can then spend resources to claim a tile within the sphere structure. Here, dice value becomes important and this is also marked with one of your drones. You can battle enemies by placing drones on their card in columns to mark your attack in the vessels. If the sum of all drones on this card equals or exceeds this value, then the player with the most drones on that card gets a greater share of the spoils, although this dice can alter the target number if needed. Instead of taking active drones from your board to mark areas, you can instead slide them to the inactive area to increase your dice value by one for each drone that you move. Not only that, if you decide to place one of your dice on a location that already contains a dice of any colour, it's going to cost you a drone that must be sent to the inactive area. 
Due to this, you really have to think carefully about your actions. Firstly, do you have dice of the required value for the locations? Do you have active drones to spend, whether it be to mark a location or deactivate or both? Many times I've planned to go to a particular location and have one active drone available to claim a sphere tile, for example, but another player got there first, meaning that although I have resources to claim the tile, I would have to spend the drone to land on the populated location. Grr. As you'll likely run short of drones at some point, you need to consider limited use or regular salvage and fabrication actions to gain more. However, drones can also be removed from the game and placed on the salvage area of your board to gain instant bonuses such as resources and morale. If you can fill columns with drones this way, you get use of an additional die that you can use for that turn that can be hugely beneficial because you could end up getting that sought after resource that then allows you to utilize that game dice for big turns. There are three different resources in the game. Ore is primarily used for claiming sphere tiles, gold for hiring crew from the market area, and this green ominous leaf that looks a lot like, that's right, green tea. What? Oh, it's crystal, and this is largely spent to attack enemies. Hired crew sit under your player board and are at three different tiers with increasing costs. These provide victory points when bought and a once around ability like trading resources or reactive abilities for gaining morale if a requirement is met or salvaging drones in times of need. Therefore, they provide a diminished version of an action but save you a dice in drones. If you gain too many, you can retire them and also get a one-off bonus for doing so and if left in the market area, they'll gain morale bonus each round making them more attractive. As you can see, there is a lot to think about and we haven't even gone over the victory point scoring or how to build a little engine to aid this. Certain actions like defeating enemies or claiming sphere tiles can gain you morale and reputation. In fact, if another player claims a tile within the solar sphere adjacent to one of yours, you get a morale boost. The more you have, the more victory points you get during the game, but losing morale for not defeating enemies, for example, can result in you losing victory points. At the start of each round, you roll all your dice and store them on the docking area of your player board. Depending on the value or sets rolled, you could end up getting morale at this stage. Before your first turn, you may reduce your morale any number of spaces. If you pass these spanner icons, you get what is known as a kickback for each one. And these provide resources, fabrication or salvaging drones. Depending on the location of your reputation marker in relation to your morale, you could end up with additional kickbacks to use. As the sum of all your rolled dice determines play order, these kickbacks can be hugely beneficial at this time, albeit at a cost. As you can see, for quite a small box, you get a big game. You need to carefully select actions, manage drones and how they're used, whether to boost actions or change dice values. How much morale are you going to lose each round to gain a kickback? And do you have crew to provide resources to save that precious dice, allowing you to visit a different location? With three turns each round, possibly four if you salvage adequately, you do need a plan A and B possibly C and D at higher player counts. Rolling high numbers on your die may allow you to be the first player, but you'll receive far less morale from the docking area for doing so. So, how do you win? The game lasts six rounds, or at the end of the round when all solar sphere tiles have been claimed, where the player with the most victory points is the winner. Usually, you don't score that many points during the game. Most are claimed at end game from what you've achieved during play. At setup, solar sphere tiles are shuffled and some may or may not be placed face down. Only face up tiles can be claimed and require dice of a specific value at the location card and adequate resources. Each game will have a randomly drawn sphere scoring card that indicates how you gain additional victory points depending on the pattern of tiles you've claimed. These objectives could score you points for tiles in clusters or claim tiles on the outer edges of the spheres for example. Each sphere tile, crew card or ship card may contain one or more faction symbols of which there are three. For each set you own at the end of the game, you score an additional five victory points so can end up racking a great deal of these points and you can mark these on a tracker card for ease of reference. There is also a wild faction token that you can use but you'll still need to collect this icon from cards and tiles to apply it. The position of your reputation and morale on the player board tracks can provide positive or negative points as well as resources and active drones you have left. 
That means on top of what we've discussed about the game, you also need to consider what factions you have and what faction icons you need to claim. A crew member may provide a nice ability, but be of a faction icon you have a high number of, so you need to consider a trade-off in this situation. I also like the way enemy ship cards are claimed. Any player can attack and place drones in columns on an enemy card and if defeated, the player with the highest number of drones or those placed earlier than other players gets to claim the card and faction icons, although victory points and morale are received by all. Therefore, having just one drone can give you a share of the rewards and you can always add more later, but each attack action will cost you a green tea. Sorry, crystal resource. And the game will add neutral drones to enemy ships to support attacks. The game offers high replay value with a completely different setup for the Spear, which just looks great on the table, as well as variability in the market area for crew and different strengths of ships based on player count. The game also includes a solo mode where you play against the Delta, Rift, Area, Nexus, Defense Automa, which coincidentally is an acronym of Dranda. I mean, how lucky is that? The Dranda uses a deck of AI cards that dictate the order of dice played and location. It generally blocks locations forcing you to spend drones, claims sphere tiles with a nice criteria checklist, or takes crew and attacks enemies. It's a very good solo game, but man is it hard, and I generally get spanked even at the easier settings. If you're mad enough to attempt to play at the hardest setting, then you seem on par with Dranda Games themes, hurtling at light speed into a big ball of fire. I like this game a lot. You get to create a nice little engine and have quite a bit going on from collection of faction icons, which actions to take and what order, risk and morale or drone loss for a sneaky bonus and managing to get those boosted actions. The Sphere scorecards allow you to consider victory points over the cost of the tile and dice placement which is a nice decision to make and overall the components are awesome with great table presence and theme. If you're looking for a highly competitive game with resource management, dice placement and a challenging solo variant then you should definitely check out Solar Sphere. I've got this hankering for green tea now. This is Ninja Geek Games. Cheers.